The regular meeting of the Wayne Westland Community School Board Education is now brought to order on Monday, November 10th at 7 o'clock. On behalf of the Board of Education, I'd like to welcome everyone. Your attendance this evening reflects an interest in local education and is greatly appreciated. Item number 156.15, Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag. Today we have some students from Hicks Elementary School where Dr. Mr. Rodzinski is the principal. And we're going to bring James Cal Gurley and Taylor Latrice Lewis Stevens to the front, please. Secretary. This means that she helps her teacher by answering the phone. Taylor also represents her class as a member of the Student Lighthouse team where they discuss how to implement the seven habits into school culture. Our other student is James Kyle Gurley, who I understand is called Kyle. And he is nine years old and in the fourth grade in Mrs. Dunlap's class. His hobbies include cheerleading, karate, and dancing. He's always willing and eager to help others. And his leadership role in the classroom is teacher helper. For this role, he helps take attendance each day and also helps to send messages to other classrooms if needed. He is a great friend to those around him and always gives his best effort every day. Reading is his favorite subject, but he has made great growth in all subject areas this year. He is a pleasure to teach. Education and President Walker, we'd like to thank you so much for leading us in the uh, Pledge of Allegiance tonight. And we have some awards of recognition for you. And Taylor, I'll give that to you first. And then ask you if you have any parents here that you want to introduce or any of your family. Um, I have my mom, my brother, my grandfather, my aunt, and my uncle. And I also want to thank Mr. Rizinski for giving me this opportunity. Aww. Thank you. Kyle, we want to award on behalf of the Board of Education this award of recognition to you on behalf of the board. And I'd like to have you introduce any parents or people you have in the audience that you want to introduce. I have my mom, my two sisters, and my brother, Caleb. All right. We have the principal of your school, Mr. Uh, Rosinski here, and maybe he could stand up and be recognized also. <laughs> Again, it's just a pleasure having you here and, and representing the school district and uh, so the people in this community see how wonderful the students are that we have. Thank you. Now, I think she's going to get a picture if you yeah, turn around. You, you can hold your award down a little bit. <coughs> you're gonna get one with you and then... I want to get one with me and one without. <laughs> okay, just look at me. All right, thank you. Ready? One, two, three. Okay. All right. <laughs> 
Can you guys take one step forward for me? Perfect. Good job. Thank you. Thank you very much. She's our new coordinator for the Upward Bound program, and she started with us in August. And I'm not going to say anything so I don't steal her script. So. <laughs> <laughs> I am Heather Breskel, and I'm the new Upward Bound director, as was mentioned. I just began here with Wayne Westland in August, and I'm incredibly excited for this opportunity. And I'm here bringing a peace offering of cookies and a public <laughs> apology because I managed to, in my newness and the craziness of a brand new job, I scheduled our really fantastic awards banquet for Upward Bound that the school board and the superintendent normally um, attend regularly, and I scheduled it on the October board meeting night. So, I brought cookies, so make sure you get cookies. <laughs> <laughs> And, <laughs> and I am going to give you a spiel of all of the fantastic, wonderful things that I said in, in the two-hour banquet in five minutes. Okay? I'll keep it brief, I promise. Um, as I'm new to Upward Bound and Wayne Westland Community Schools, I had a lot of learning to do in an incredibly short amount of time. Um, so tonight I want to talk a little bit about the history of Upward Bound and Wayne Westland because I got to learn all about that. And I'm not sure that you as a school board are completely familiar with the, all of the information of the Upward Bound program. Um, for instance, um, let's see. Um, this year marks the 50th anniversary of the Upward Bound program. So 50 years, pretty significant. Um, President Lyndon Johnson declared in his first day of the union there was an unconditional war on poverty that we cannot afford to lose. His first action was to sign the Educational Opportunity Act of 1964. It ultimately, this led to the creation of a program for high school students called Upward Bound, with its purpose to identify secondary school students from low income, at risk backgrounds, and to motivate and prepare them to pursue post-secondary education. There were 17 pilot programs that began operation in the summer of 1965. They serve 2,061 students. Today, there are eight different types of federal TRIO programs that uh, all of them are working to improve the educational opportunities at all levels for those who need it. The Upward Bound program now funds 816 projects serving 59,143 students throughout the nation. Um, the Upward uh, <coughs> Bound program in the past 50 years has served more than five, two million individuals, with some alumnus such as Tay Diggs, Viola Davis, the NBC correspondent John Keonis, NBA player AC Green Jr., and the one and only Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> Wayne Westland is one of the only um, projects that has been awarded funding from the United States national government that is a secondary school. Almost all other um, entities that have received the funding are post-secondary institutions. Um, so that is a fantastic fact that you're really special um, in that you have earned this funding and you've had this funding <coughs> for 31 years. We are currently under a grant. <coughs> this grant will expire in 2017. So that means next summer I will be spending a lot of time rewriting the grant in the hopes of earning our renewal. Um, but we are guaranteed funding per the federal government for the Upward Bound program for Wayne Westland Community Schools through 2017. 
Um, the way the, the Upward Bound program works is that the government gives a significant amount of money for specific programs so that they can help, so that we can help our students to reach their post-secondary goals. There is a mandated six-week summer program of which we've had students attend Princeton University, Green Bay, Wisconsin. They go up north in uh, Michigan and they do some nature <laughs> studies with the Safari International Club. Um, and we've also had students attend University of Michigan Ann Arbor and the University of Toledo for, for their educational opportunities. And students who don't want to venture so far from home, they, we help them, we pay for their school craft college credits so that they are learning throughout the summer and that helps to keep them on track and gives them college credits ahead of time. Um, the students also are available, uh, they have the opportunity to have educational and cultural opportunities that they otherwise would not get, such as we tour colleges. We went to the University of Michigan last month. Um, the juniors and seniors are allowed to have cultural educational enrichment trips, such as we just got back from Chicago. We spent four days in Chicago, and me and 31 students and some chaperones. Um, we toured the Northwestern. We went and saw the Shedd Aquarium. We had students walk down State Street and feel what a big city is. They went to the top of the Willis Tower. All sorts of opportunities that normally wouldn't occur for an at-risk, low-income group. And those are the types of things that help to ensure that students feel competent and capable once they get to college so that they can continue and fulfill not just get to college, they're going to be successful in college because they feel their worth. Um, so our students don't get to just give this gift. The federal government, of course, has a catch for all of these things. The students are mandated to do four hours of community service every single month. So if you have opportunities, let us know, because I have slave power. Um, um, also, they, they, their GPA is not allowed to drop below a 2.5. They're mandated to do that six-week summer program. And they're also mandated to do um, school activities and not have poor attendance. So they're, they're being good individuals to earn these rights that they get to partake in. Um, so, also, <coughs> In doing these things, last year's seniors earned over $2 million in college scholarship money. So our students that are in this program have been incredibly successful um, with their life in general. Um, so I also would like to say um, that this beginning was a little rough for me. Um, I walked into a position. The Upward Bound program normally has four individuals employed. When I walked in in August, only one of the four positions was full, okay, not mine, and that was full by, filled by an individual <coughs> who had not ever done that job. So it was an incredibly great learning curve that occurred um, in a very short period of time. And during that time, I had to frantically run to Dr. Harmala's office and beg her to help me because no one's name was on any document and the federal government said I was crazy and I couldn't have access to anything to do with the grant. And so um, for your help in my hour of need, I have a gift for you in addition to cookies. Um, I have a 50th anniversary scarf to present to you so you will remember our Upward Bound and our wonderful year. And other than that, if anyone has any questions about the Upward Bound program, I am currently, we have 67 students right this moment. And I'm going to be doing the recruitment for freshmen um, next week. We have about 200 freshmen who are interested. There will be 25 slots. So it is going to be an extensive um, elimination process, I guess is how I'll say it. Um, but we always make sure that the, we get the best students for the program that we know will be the most successful. Um, sadly, we can't take more than what the government allows us. So, and it is a federal program, and so it is federal mandates that have to be followed for almost everything to do with this. And so luckily, I was also given the opportunity to 
learn um, in Washington, D.C., all of the rules and regulations that I have to make sure that I'm following, otherwise we're all in trouble. Um, so I got that covered now. So if anyone has any questions, feel free to call me, and next year I promise I will check your calendar before I make my, <laughs> my banquet. Question, where are the other seven scarves? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you weren't the one who helped me. <laughs> she made four phone calls to the Department of Ed for me because they wouldn't answer their phone. And emails. And emails. <laughs> Sorry. This is Madel. As I said at the last meeting, it's not always about the food when it comes to a banquet. It's, it's about listening to the kids' stories. Mm -hmm. And some of them would break your heart. Mm -hmm. But this program has brought them success that for some of them they have never felt before. And for that, we need to thank everybody who has ever had any part of this program touched any student's life to make it more successful. So continue the good job. I hope to. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you so much. Moving on to item number 159.15, citizen comments, agenda items only. Mr. Madison, hello. Hello. Congratulations to you two, and Trav, and Melanie. Um, I'm just going over this construction budget, and I'm a wee bit concerned that we picked quality roofing uh, at $481,000 uh, when the next two are $600,000. There's over a $100,000 difference between the, the bottom and then the two middle ones, and then obviously there's a high bid at eight eighty two. So I'm a little bit concerned how can they get this job done for this time, this type of money when the other bidders are all much higher, um, if they're not prevailing wage or what's the story. And then even on this cost, I can't believe we're not redoing the whole roof of, of the Wayne Ford Career Tech Center for this kind of dollars. Um, just a concern I have, thank you. Thank you, anyone else? Moving on to item number 160.15, the agenda. Move approval. Moved by Dr. Lieber, support, supported by Mrs. Madison. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Mr. Buckaloo? Yes. Dr. Weaver? Yes. Mrs. Madison? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Mrs. Schofield? Yes. I vote yes, and Mrs. Walker? Yes, motion carries with the record reflect 7 0. Moving on to item number 161.15, review and approval, human resource items, this vote. Yes, thank you. I have the pleasure tonight of recommending to the board Ms. Stacy Williamson for the principalship at Franklin Middle School. Um, Stacy actually started her professional career with us here in Lake Land as a student teacher at Taft Elementary School. Uh, she was then hired as an upper elementary teacher at Taft, and after serving that, she became a sixth grade teacher at Franklin Middle School, and then she became the assistant principal at Stevenson Middle School. Um, Stacy has been serving as the interim principal at Franklin since October 27th. Um, she has a degree in Bachelor of Arts from Madonna University. She also has a Master's in Educational Leadership and she has her Administrative Certification. Um, um, motion to I, I will motion that we accept Support. this. Moved by Mrs. Medell, uh, supported by Mrs. Madison. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Mrs. Madison? Yes. Mrs. Schofield? Yes. Mr. Bakalu? Yes. Dr. Weaver? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. I vote yes. And Mrs. Walker? Yes. Let the record reflect 7 0. Congratulations, Mrs. Williamson. Thank you. I'm going to just take a few moments. I'd like to thank um, Dr. Harmala and her administrative team, um, along with the members of the school board. Um, together, I know that with my talented staff that I have on hand, my dedicated parents, awesome kids, I know we're going to do great things at Franklin. So look out for us, because here we come. Thank you. Very proud of her. I'm sorry, item number 162.15, review and approval, business services and finance items. Mr. Larson Scheidler. Thank you, Madam President. Um, thank you, Madam President. Um, Tonight we have uh, bid packet three, rebid of the painting of the cafeterias, and bid packet number four, roof replacements at Career Tech and Wildwood, and the HVAC unit uh, replacement at Career Tech. 
Uh, the uh, bids were publicly advertised and opened on October 16, 2014 at 11 a.m. Uh, McCarthy Smith performed interviews and reviewed qualifications of all of the bidders and selected for bid packet three um, for the food service fund. This is a painting of the cafeterias that was originally bid with bid package three, uh, all the components bid package three, uh, the AMS freezer, the cafeteria table replacement were approved by the board at its October 20th meeting. Uh, at that time, there were no bids received for the painting. Uh, Rebidding of the painting with the same $75,000 budget uh, was performed and we received three bids. Uh, and these are noted on your page 24 of your board packet. The lowest bid of 71925 by G&T Commercial was selected. Uh, what I, this is not just simple painting, uh, like flat painting of the uh, cafeterias. What we're going to be doing is painting with school colors, their mascots, um, so uh, if we're trying to get some, you know, school pride and something colorful in there. So I, I, I've seen the drawings. I think they'll look very, very nice in the cafeteria. Um, this work is going to be performed in the summer of 2015 after school is dismissed for break because there will be some pews. Um, bid packet number four, the work replacements at Career Tech in Wildwood and the HVAC unit are all from the sinking fund. The total budget was $1,950,000. Total recommended cost of $1,480,000 includes uh, fees. Uh, construction costs, Wildwood roof is by quality roofing at $330,500. Uh, there are four bids received and those are on page 23. Uh, this is a PPC roofing with welded seams and a 15-year warranty. Uh, career Tech roof is again by quality roofing at uh, nine or four ninety six six hundred, and again the same four bids were received. This is also PPC roofing with welded seams and a 15-year warranty. This is replacing a roof that is from 1989. Uh, career Tech Alternate uh, R1 is quality roofing. This is $16,000 reseam of the rubber roofing. Um, and this was built or put on with the 1998 bond. And as far as the Career Tech HVAC, this is contrast mechanical at 389. Uh, there are five bids received on page 25 of your packet. And there is also one uh, reduction of $9,700. What we're going to be doing is elevating the mechanicals, not putting the curves in. Uh, so this will put them off the roof slightly. And uh, Career Tech HVAC Electrical is O'Donnell Electric, and this is $70,665. And that were, there were three bids for that on page 26. Um, I described the bidding process to you before. Um, we put in local papers for two weeks. We put in a bid for Michigan. And then also McCarthy Smith advertises and solicits bids. Um, McCarthy and Smith fees and reimbursables total 109.500. CMP is 3.9% on the first 500,000 and 2.4% on the 740. 65 for a total of 37,200. Reimbursable is for the staff costs uh, to supervise projects, and this is 47,100. Uh, general conditions, which are listed, 25,200. And TMP fees are uh, 68 for 10, and there is also a contingency at 5%, which is 62,000 for total fees and contingency of 239,910. Um, you know, I, I will mention that I met with uh, Bill McCarthy and Doug Underwood and McCarthy Smith on November 3rd, uh, 2014, to review and discuss <coughs> the uh, bid recommendations before you tonight. Uh, we discussed fees, reimbursable amounts related to the projects. Um, portions of bid packet three and four will overlap. So this will result in lower reimbursables and fees. Um, this is the stated amount tonight. 
but what you'll see when we bring a close out to you is a lot of the fees are lower than what they are when you approve them, such as contingencies. Uh, future projects will be discussed and planned by administration to determine the necessity and the extent of construction management services. Uh, motion is in order. Madam President, yes. I would like to make the motion that we accept bid package three and four as read. Moved by Dr. Weaver. Any support? Supported. Supported by Mr. Griffin. Any discussion? Yes, I have a question. You had mentioned the 15 year warranty for the roof. Mm -hmm. Who will be in charge? of maintaining the 15-year warranty? Well, we will. We would go back to quality roofing to get that warranty if something should happen. So we have an employee who would be responsible for mm -hmm. We contract with the roofing company. The contract is held by the district. So is that in building grounds and maintenance? Mm -hmm. or and yeah. Grounds and maintenance. Um, the roof work, who was that? Uh, that would start after the school is let out in the summer, yeah. All, all of this will be done in the okay. summer. I have a question um, on 26 and 27. I'm sorry, 26 and 25. It says fan disc. What's a fan disc? It's, it's one of the columns going down. Um, I, know what, I know what bid security is, but fan disc, I'm not sure what that is. Oh, that's the uh, uh, familial disclosure. What they have to do is disclose that they don't have any relations. Okay, as opposed to family discount. Uh, no family discount, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think that goes against with <laughs> disclosure. All right, what is Iran synced? Uh, what you have to do is uh, they have to make a statement that they are not um, providing money to terrorist groups and so forth. It, it's a Michigan law. Yeah. Really? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I wasn't aware of that. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay. I don't have a question, but I have a comment. Uh, you're providing us with much more information in an understandable way, and uh, I appreciate that. We're getting some different questions tonight, questions that we've never had before, uh, and I think that that uh, kind of supports the idea that we are being glad to a point where we're understanding this much better than we have been in the past. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Anyone else? Roll call vote, please. Mrs. Schofield? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Mrs. Madison? No. Mr. Buckaloo? Yes. Dr. Weaver? Yes. Yes, and Mrs. Walker? Yes, let the record reflect the 6 1. Motion carries. Item number 163.15, uh, student reinstatement. Mr. Albright. Thank you, Madam President, members of the board. Uh, the district is required to follow legal guidelines held within the state school code when a student has been expelled from the school. And, and uh, the student petitions after 150 school days for reinstatement. The district convenes a reinstatement committee and that, that group met on October 27th. It consisted of two members of the Board of Education, an administrator and teacher from the school, and a district parent. What we would need from the board tonight is three things. One would be a, a motion to adopt the committee's recommendation. Uh, second, the resolution would need to be read into the record and then subsequently a vote by the board on that resolution. So I'll entertain a motion at this time. Yes, yeah, so moved. Moved by, moved by Mr. Griffin, supported by Ms. Madison. <laughs> um, limited discussion, if any. Okay. Um, reading of the resolution. Whereas the Board of Education of the Wayne West Lane Community Schools convened on November 10th, 2014, <coughs> pursuant to Michigan case law 380.1311. Section 5, subsection F, to consider the petition for school reinstatement filed on behalf of expelled student A1, and to consider the report and recommendation of the reinstatement committee previously appointed by the Board of Education pursuant to Michigan case law 380.1211, section 5, subsection D. 
whereas the Board of Education is persuaded that student A1 should be reinstated to the Wayne Westland Community Schools subject to the following terms and conditions. One, placement at Adams Upper Elementary School. Two, the student will conduct himself, herself at all times in strict conformity with the district's school district's student code of conduct. Three, the parent and the student understand and agree that if the district's sole and exclusive discretion, the student violates the student code of conduct in any way, the district will immediately suspend the student and initiate due process procedures to criminally expel the student from the school district. Therefore, it is resolved that the reinstatement committee's report and recommendation is hereby adopted by the Board of Education and that for the reasons stated herein, the petition for school reinstatement filed on behalf of student 1A is hereby granted subject to strict compliance with the terms and conditions set forth above. We have a roll call vote, please. Dr. Weaver. Yes. Mr. Buckaloo. Yes. Mrs. Schofield. Yes. Mr. Griffin. Yes. Mrs. Madison. Yes. I vote yes. And Mrs. Walker. Yes. With the record reflects seven zero. I can, I can read it. Okay. Be it further resolved that a copy of the resolution will be provided to the student and the parent. Item number 164.15 Board of Education Committee Reports. This evening we don't actually have any committee reports, but what we will be doing is our follow-up. Last month, if when you all were here, the Board of Education decided to come up with their own mission statement. And so since we did that out publicly, it's only right that we sign it, that we're all in agreement of it at this meeting. So at this time we're going to take the time to sign the Board of Education mission statement, and I'll read it for you. Board of Education Mission Statement. As Wayne Westland Community School District Board of Education Trustees, we are accountable to uphold our commitment to provide the best education for our students' future. We will accomplish this through fiscal responsibility and by supporting all facets of family and community with the utmost respect, integrity, and transparency. And at this time, I'm going to start it down here, and then we'll go. Yeah, and then we'll bring it on back. Here's the pen. We're going to all use the same pen. Yeah. Right now, one of my 37. Right. You got a sign right below it here, man? Wherever you like. All right, thank you. Just make sure it's your name. <laughs> yeah, well, I warned you, my handwriting is not too great. We'll do the best we can. And then you'll probably see us do this again in January as well. Not probably, you will. <laughs>
little hard to see that small. It's easier to enlarge that than to have you sign something very large. Mm -hmm. Item number 165.15, Superintendent Report, Dr. Hamala. Thank you. Uh, as we move into the lame duck session of our legislature, um, I will be watching the education bills very closely and commenting as necessary. I share with you some of the ones that uh, were possible concerns, and I'll just keep tabs and keep you posted on those as well. I will also be establishing a superintendent steering committee after the first of the year. This steering committee will start out with representation from our staff across the various roles and levels, and the committee will be charged with strategic guidance and input, systems monitoring, stakeholder input and feedback, and they will act as communication liaisons with the rest of the staff. The steering committee will not be a decision-making body, so they won't take over for things like curriculum council, but they'll be able to give insights into the operations of our district from all of our staff members. I'm looking forward to that. I've been collecting a lot of data from all of our buildings and departments, and they will be the group to start to go through that data on what's working well in the district and what we need to change. And I anticipate we'll meet about four to six times per year, and I'll keep you posted on the work of that group. And last of all, I'd like to wish uh, tomorrow a happy Veterans Day to all of our veterans and to all of those who are serving in the military on all of our behalf. Hope everybody has a great day tomorrow. Thank you. 166.15, citizen comments. Digging further in this construction management, if you guys can turn to page 28 of your agenda, I'm a little bit confused and concerned of why bid package number four is 1.2 million, but we're paying them a percentage based on 500,000 to 3.9%, and then 740,000 based on 2.4%. The whole bid package is 1.2 million, then we should be paying 2.4% on the whole package. Why it's subdivided, I have no idea. Also, if you go to general conditions, uh, the construction support allowance of, of $24,000 is already part of the personnel reimbursement. So why do we have a, another 24,000 on top of the 47,000 in construction management fees? Um, contingency, this budget was based on 1.9 million. We normally do a 5% contingency, but it was only budgeted at $28,000, but we have a contingency now of 62, based on a total project of 1.49. So, shouldn't our contingencies be based on the 1.9 and be higher instead of what was budgeted at, at 28,000? There's just a lot of double dipping going on on this page. So I'm concerned of why we're paying 3.9% on only 500,000 and then another 2.4% on the balance of the contract when it's all one bid package. <coughs> so I would expect this to be reviewed better because we're paying extra fees that we shouldn't be. Thank you. I review a recommendation Board of Education, Mr. Griffin. Thank you, Madam President. I just want to tell uh, the Wayne Westland uh, School Board uh, people that I appreciate their trust and their be electing, electing me to a term that I was appointed to and that I believe that this Board of Education is one that will uh, work in the best interest of all the students and the people in this community and for myself personally I pledge to you again that I will be someone that uh, will not uh, support any fiscal items that uh, put us into uh, even close to an emergency manager where this district can manage itself. And I, the other issue that I think is important and the board uh, knows this is important, important to me is uh, the new superintendent's uh, role and uh, number one in uh, helping and improving instruction in this district. And I think we've hired a very, very capable person and uh, that will do that for us. And I look forward to work in the next two years with uh, the support of education on those issues and others that are important to the community in this uh, school district. And I think we're in good hands and we're, we're going to be moving moving up. I just wish that we could uh, work, work to, to and get more funding, but you know what? I've learned a long time ago in life, both personally and in politics, that you got to live within your means. <laughs> because I don't ever want it to be said that this Board of Education or myself voted to not be able to pay the employees what we have on the books, on time. It may not be the best, and we do need to improve that. I say that uh, honestly, but until we have the money to do that, we've got to live within our means. And uh, so that's, uh, I 
say again, I, I appreciate uh, your confidence in me as a board member, and I thank you very much for your support. Thank you. Dr. Weaver? Yes, thank you, Madam President. I'd like to take just a moment uh, to congratulate Ms. Hines and also uh, to congratulate those on our board who were reelected. Uh, also, I'd like to say congratulations to Stacy Williamson, and uh, I'd like to uh, give a personal note to her husband. You won't ever see her from this night forward. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even dream about her. <laughs> Tomorrow morning, 11 o'clock, are our Veterans Day ceremonies at our high schools. And uh, also, um, just uh, wanted to share that info. So I'm, uh, those conclude my comments. Thank, Thank you. you, Mrs. Madison. Just want to mirror what both of my fellow board members have said here tonight, and congratulations, Mrs. Williamson. And I also wanted to thank James and Taylor for the wonderful pledge. and. The very interesting comments at the end. I think we might have a future president <laughs> tonight. And congratulations to um, our Melody Hines and our board members for re-election. And that is all I have for this evening. Thank you. Ms. Schofield. Um, I would just like to say I really appreciated the fact that um, you had um, our new Upward Bound director, um, Ms. Ruskell, mm -hmm. is that how you said? Um, come in and do a presentation. Um, I think that was very interesting. I know through the years I've known a number of young people who have gone through the Upward Bound program, and it's a wonderful program, and those students have had a great deal of success. Um, several of them that I'm still in contact with are doing ama amazingly well in their careers, and um, it's it's a real game changer for a lot of those families because they don't know where to begin with the college process. And so I'm glad to see that we're continuing on with the program and I think it's something that we need to market um, so that the rest of our community um, is well aware of, of that program in, at Way Memorial so that they know that it's an option for their students and to be looking for that information. Um, I'd also like to say congratulations to Mrs. Williamson. Um, I've known you since you've started in the <laughs> district and it's very exciting to see um, one of our employees move up and take um, the leadership role at one of our buildings. So congratulations. And congratulations to those of you who won your election and to Mrs. Hines. Um, it, is, it was um, uh, just congratulations. <laughs> my brain obviously went one direction and my mouth was going another. So anyways, we'll, we will end it with that before I say anything else that I shouldn't say. <laughs> congratulations. Thank you, Cindy. <laughs> I'm in for it. Congratulations. And, you know, it's one of those, somebody stop me from talking, I can't yeah. quit. <laughs> uh, in front of you is the monthly expense report from Head Start, as required by federal government. Uh, Head Start is going great guns. They are still fully enrolled with... Uh, uh, a minimum of 10 kids on their waiting list. I'm pretty sure, and thank heavens John Mills is in the audience today. We still have openings at Great Start. We should be full, but we might have one or two. Okay, so if you're still interested in the preschool program, that is available. Uh, I got a chance to uh, attend a JROTC competition uh, out in center line. And not only seeing our students um, put into action all of the practice and drilling that they have been working on in their spare time, it also gives me a chance to look at other facilities in other school districts. Mm -hmm. And some of them I'm quite surprised and others I'm a little shocked in comparing them to what we have here in Wayne Westland. We are cut above some of the school districts out there. And even though there are times that we get down on ourselves 
look at test scores and get really depressed or you know elated depending on how well our students have performed on the test or which way they've changed the test that year we need to remember that we have some really great things going on in this district and one of them are our facilities and our technology and what our teaching staff brings to the kids even our buses which are our biggest advertisement billboard on wheels you know while they're out there safely picking up our students and delivering them to the educational facility and taking them back home again they are our biggest advertisement and sometimes we get caught up in the minutia of of a school district and we forget that these are our treasures JROTC art is one of our treasures and our kids usually perform outperform other programs so congratulations to them we have our high school plays which I alluded to at last meeting and I wasn't quite sure the titles at that point but I know that the observer ran an article and Mr. Ingham is here today uh, to make sure that we understand we are invited to this uh, play that they are doing which is two heads are better than one and that is this week on Thursday Friday and Saturday at 7 o'clock and then next week we'll be doing memorials which is murder in the hair which I understand is an interactive type of play where the audience will decide during the break how the play will end so the students have to be prepared for different scenarios and practice a lot of different lines in order for the play to end so this will this will be interesting this is something a little bit more unique than they've ever done before tomorrow's Veterans Day and I sent out on Facebook an invitation to our alumni who have served in our military to come and be part of our ceremonies at both John Glenn and Wayne Pine. You are always welcome and thank you for your service. Don't forget Thanksgiving Buffet is coming up and that is this Thursday, Wednesday, Wednesday at uh, Volk Tech. I know that they ran an article in the Observer inviting people. The uh, money from this program, uh, from this event, will go to our Family Resource Center and will help provide Thanksgiving meals to those in need. It begins at 11.30 at Career Tech. 11.50? Okay, 15, get in line early because it <laughs> does go down the hallway and they take donations of course and they suggest ten dollars they'll take more Trust yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we had a chance this week to go to uh, our last week to go to uh, Michigan Association of School Boards conference where we all split up and went to different uh, presentations a lot of good things uh, on the horizon. One of the things Mr. Buckaloo said is that we are cut above everybody else in some cases. So we're not still back working at square one. We've, we've done our work. Congratulations, Mrs. Williamson. I have had a chance to work with her over the years. She already knows how hard we work here. She's been part of the process and continue the great work. Okay. And again, I'm glad to see our Upper Town program doing so well. So with that said. Thank you, Mrs. Medell. Mr. Uppelman. Thank you. Well, congratulations to Kyle, not James, and, um, <laughs> and to Taylor for getting us off to the, to the good start uh, with the Pledge of Allegiance. And Ms. Williamson, congratulations to you. I know that you do a fantastic job. and. Uh, Hopefully you do get home sometime. <laughs> Congratulations again to you. And tomorrow, as it's been said, is Veterans Day, and there are celebrations all across the country. We're honored to, to host two of those celebrations, one at John Black, the other at Wayne Memorial. And again, they do start at 11 o'clock, and if you can see your way clear to come out and, and to honor those who've served, uh, I, I think it would be the appropriate thing to do. Uh, as Mrs. Medell said, uh, Dr. Weaver, uh, Ms. Walker, Ms. Medell, and I were in uh, Grand Rapids over the weekend, and it was <coughs> a, well, it was an intense weekend. Um, 
we would start at 7 in the morning for breakfast and by 8 o'clock or sometimes 7.30 we were in sessions and those sessions ran with very few interruptions until well, I took some classes so it was night at night and that was the way it was on Thursday and on Friday and again on Saturday. Sunday was an easy day. We didn't start till 8 <coughs> and we got off at 3. Uh, but while I was there, I saw a number of presentations, and one of them had to do with partnerships. And I won't say too much about that at this time, except to say that that might be something we hear about in the near future here in this district. Uh, and I think it holds great promise for the district and, and uh, really for those that we partner with. I was able to take four MISB courses and three of them had to do with budget and finance and I hope that uh, because of that uh, an opportunity that, that I'm a little bit more knowledgeable of some of the things that Mr. Larson Scheidler has to say uh, down the road. But it was a wonderful experience as it always is and uh, oh, one final thing, I met a Wayne High graduate uh, who was a former John Glenn teacher who now is the superintendent of schools in Galesburg, Augustus. There are a lot of wonderful people out there. I was able to talk to people from Garden City, school board members there, and again, board members from Livonia and from Romulus, and from a number of other places around the state. And we did share uh, war stories. We did talk about what was going on that was good, and what was going on that was bad. And as Mrs. Medell said, we have a lot of good things going on in this district and not nearly the number of troublesome things that some of our um, brother and sister districts are experiencing. So and those are my comments. Thank you. And by the time it gets to me, <laughs> everything has been pretty much covered. So I usually keep it short and simple and just say congratulations, Ms. Williams, and I know you do a great job. <coughs> um, as always, thank you for joining us, taking time out your day to come to our meetings it's greatly appreciated. Um, thank you to the board. Um, keep up the good work. You guys are doing great. May I take a highly unusual comment at the end before you or before yeah. you adjourn? Yeah, you can do whatever you want. Finish first. I just didn't want to lose you when you went down this way. Also, I, you know, I'll extend congratulations to those who um, who uh, joined the elections and Mrs. Hines, and um, thank you. And happy Veterans happy Day. I know we have a few in the audience. Um, enjoy your day tomorrow. Go get some of those meals. and <laughs> You deserve way more than that, but at least enjoy your day. And with that being said, I'm going to turn it back over to you, Dr. Mom. Thank you very much. I normally wouldn't add a comment at the end, but I do want to congratulate our board members who are returning to their seats to serve us. And I appreciate you being willing to serve. Congratulations to Melanie Hines as well. But I also recognize that people put themselves out there to serve, and as a community, we benefit from diversity of opinion, whether people can sit on the board or whether people are not sitting on the board. And I really appreciate the openness that people have towards sharing their thinking and ideas. And the more people sitting together are unalike than alike, I think the more we benefit as a district. So thank you all for putting yourselves out there, and thank you for being willing to serve. I appreciate it. I also, um, I, mean, I just also want to add that you know during that time, a lot of people take their time out to run, and and things don't always turn out the way that they're supposed to. But I, uh, but don't always turn out the way you want them to. But we thank you for taking the time out to do it and stay involved and and continue to put your you know put yourselves out there to stand up for education because that's what it's pretty much about is standing up for the kids and you want to make a difference. So continue to do that and continue the good work. And, Ms. Medellin, you have to and that's exactly what I, I was just going to say, uh, especially to Mr. Burge, because he is here. I was going to wait until January to say something, but since you are here, I want to take the opportunity to thank you for coming out of the community and putting yourself out there for standing for office. So hopefully we'll see you in two years. <laughs> Job well done. Uh, motion uh, to uh, where are we going? To move. <laughs> <laughs> motion to adjourn. I'll second myself. To yes, I'll second her. Yeah. <laughs> Moved by Mrs. Burgess and supported by Mrs. Uh, Schofield. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.
all opposed. Motion carries. Great future start right here.